As I mentioned earlier, today we are starting a three-part series, maybe four, we'll see, on the prophet Jonah. And you'll say, well, why the prophet Jonah? Isn't that Old Testament? As I mentioned earlier, the Bible is there to inspire us through teachings of Jesus, but also through the teachings of the prophets. This is one of the teachings. You'll say to me, well, what do the prophet, what are the prophet teaching us? Isn't that a long time ago? Is that old stuff that doesn't apply anymore? Let's see. So what I'll be doing in this series is take verse by verse, put them into context. Of the time and to context of our day and how that applies. So one day the word of the eternal, the eternal one came to the prophet Jonah, Amittai's son. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. You would think that Jonah would have been honored to be chosen by God to speak for him. But he wasn't too thrilled, wasn't he? God could have chosen anyone else, hundreds and hundreds of other people, but he chose Jonah. He trusted him. He trusted him with the responsibility to prophesy his words to a foreign nation. In fact, a foreign nation that was the enemy of Israel. How, how can God prophesy to your enemies? We'll discover that in that series. It's interesting to know that many times People will say to me, Oh, Marco, I'm just waiting for a sign from God. I'm just waiting for a sign from God, for God to talk to me. To believe. I'm waiting for that sign, for God to to listen to God and to believe and to do his will. But then God talks to that person. And then what happens? Oh, it wasn't God. It was a coincidence. When God says, go and volunteer, and then we rationalize it. Oh, I have to take care of my kids. Who wouldn't make them breakfast? They're only 20 years old. (laughs) I need to be there. God is talking to us every day. The problem is that we expect God to talk to us in a certain way. We expect God to answer the way we want the answer to be. Sometimes God will say, you're lazy. Oh, that wasn't God. God would tell me that I'm good and great and wonderful all the time. It's just going to get worse from now on. So just make yourself uncomfortable. (laughs) Get up and go to the powerful, notorious, notorious city of Nineveh. Call out my message against it because the wickedness of its people has come to my attention. The people in Nineveh were wicked. They were violent. This book is a story about God and Jonah. God made and loves all the world and everyone in it. And Jonah understood that. He knew that. Jonah knew that God had made the world, but he could not understand 
how God could love even a foreign nation who did bad things. Jonah like, liked it when God showed him favor. God lo Jonah loved God when God was favoring him and his nation. Oh, thank you, God, for blessing this church. But then we get all wind up, tied up in a knot, when a church we don't like prosper. When a business who's our rival prosper. Why, God, why? They're not as good as I am. How can you make them prosper? But it's funny. Other people don't deserve it, but we do. So now before we throw stones at Jonah, we are all like that. We like, to ben what, we like what benefits us, and we like somehow when people are, oh, she's having a headache. Oh well. Why do I have a headache? Why me, God, please, why me? Why not you? It seems to always be fair when God shows us favor and mercy, but when the same thing happens to someone we don't like, we scream it's unfair. Verse 3, in hearing those instructions, Jonah got up and ran towards Tarshish from the Eternal's presence. He ran from God. He didn't run to God. It's funny that when we have problems, oh God, yes, God, 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 do something. And then God says, I'm calling you, do something. Oh, what? I'm busy. Who's going to watch with Netflix? Tarshish. To give you an idea, Tarshish at the time, so we're talking about Israel. Tarshish at the time was believed to be England. For them, it was the end of the world. It was at the end of the world. So Jonah was like, I'm not doing what you're asking me to do, God. I'm just going to go all the way to the end of the world. I'm going to hide from you. Sometimes we think that we can run from God. I tried. I'm sure you guys tried. How did that go? Not so well. Just like ourselves, everywhere we go, God is. He went down to the port of Joppa and found a ship bound to Tarshish. He, claimed, he climbed aboard, paid the fare. Keep that in mind. He paid the fare and made himself comfortable in the hold of the ship. I'm out of trouble now. Probably he was saying to himself. Jonah thought he had run away from God, but forgot something. You can't run from God. You can only run towards God. Like a never-ending circle. We think you're running from God, but we're not going anywhere. Jonah might have wondered, I can go to Tarshish if I want to. I paid the fare. I'm a passenger. I'm fine. have to obey God. The sad thing is, I can decide to not listen to the advice 
with my doctors. Eh, I'm not going to take my medication. It's expensive. But there's a price to pay. Uh, I don't need to help to eat well. I'm good. There will be a price to pay. When we run from God, there is a price to pay. we pay sometimes when we run from God, that we try to quiet that nagging voice in us with chatter, reasoning, watching TV, eating, drinking, that inner voice that calls us to be bigger than ourselves, that little voice in us, the voice of God says, go and love my people. But we want to run to Tarshish. But in the end, it hurts us. Not only it hurts us, it hurts the people we're not helping. Jonah certainly did pay the fare. paid dearly. Not to be deterred in the eternal one through an intense wind of the sea. See, at the time, they didn't have the same technology we have, like satellites and um, science of the weather and whatnot. So they thought that a storm was sent by God. They thought that, you know, the big sunshine or the big tempests were sent by God, either as a punishment or a sign. So that's what they assigned it to. Sailors panicked. They started running back and forth, throwing cargo overboard to lighten the boat. Every man out of desperation prayed to his own deity. deity. Sometimes we pray to our own diet too, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, make this one work. Ice cream and chips. <laughs> the sailors were massively superstitious at the time and still now, as we probably have experienced. And with good reason, sailing was at the time a very precarious profession. Oh God, they prayed. It's interesting that we pray only in the storms of life. They started to pray to their own God. When we are in the storm of our lives, oh God, give me health. Health. Give me a new job. Oh God. I'm in that storm. I need you right now. Please save me. We pray when our lives is just calm and nice and beautiful. It's interesting that we ask God to help us only when we are in hardship and other times we're like, it's all right, I got this. You know, we wake up in the morning and we're like, okay, God, you can't go to sleep. I'm up now. Jonah was not just asleep. Jonah fell asleep in the boat in the middle of the storm. It's funny how guilty people just fall asleep. Nothing puts us asleep spiritually like in the middle of a storm. Bible warns us about sleeping spiritually. Remember Jesus' friends falling asleep all the time? And we're like, oh God, they must have been very tired. No, no, no. They were not tired. They were spiritually asleep. They were 
sleeping, making sure that they would be unaware of the job they would have to do. So many people are falling asleep spiritually, it's sad. The fun thing about sleeping is that you don't know you're sleeping. Have you ever noticed? Nobody says, oh, I'm asleep right now. You know, sometimes we're like, okay, I'm eating, I'm walking. You never say, oh, I'm sleeping. We're totally unaware. After interrogating him in verse 10, the sailors were terrified because Jonah had told them he was running away from the Eternal's presence. What have you done, they said to him. Because of you, we're all going to be killed, the sailors said to Jonah. The sailors tried so hard to reach the shore. In many ways, they tried to reach safety. middle of our storms, we pray to God, and when that doesn't work, let me tell you, we paddle. We paddle like there's no tomorrow. We want to reach the ground. We want to reach a place where we can stand, not have the ground shaking underneath us. So they paddled. But they were unwilling to put Jonah out of the boat. They didn't want to kill an innocent man didn't want to have the wrath of God on them because they killed someone. But they threw Jonah out into the sea and at once the storm stopped. And the sea grew calm. The sailors were even more afraid when the storm stopped so suddenly. Imagine you're in life and then all of a sudden whatever you're praying for happens and you're struck by the power of God and it scares the bejesus out of you. <clears throat> you're like, oh my God, I prayed and it happened. It's funny how much we pray for things for us sometimes and we don't pray for other people. And sometimes when we pray for other people, we are the answers of our own prayers. Listen to this, that's the last verse, it's verse 17. The Eternal didn't let Jonah die. He chose a large fish to swallow, large fish. Did I say a whale? A large fish. Adam and Eve, forbidden fruit, not the forbidden apple, apple. A fish. Well, what does it matter, Marco? A fish, a whale? It matters. It's not willy nilly. The church, the Bible never chooses numbers randomly just for the sake of, okay, let's go, what, five loaves and two fishes? It's never random. There's a reason why it's a fish. Do you know why? The fish, well, I heard some, this is not a whale. <laughs> it's a fish because it's not a whale. I think that's the best answer I've ever heard. <laughs> There's a reason why it's a fish and not a whale. It's a fish because the fish was a deity of Nineveh. 
I'm going to let that sink in. I'm going to let you marinate that for a week. You know, before we had the cross, as a sign of Christianity, it was a fish. Jonah was swallowed by God for three days. You know, if Jesus, if, um, <laughs> If Jonah was to write his autobiography, it would be called Jaws, the Inside Story. <laughs> and actually, I wonder if Jonah liked to, walk, to eat fish after that. <laughs> it's like, well, I was eaten by a fish, maybe I can get back to that fish by eating it, right? Always say that Jonah was the f chicken of the sea. <laughs> so Jonah was trying to go 2,000 miles west from where he was supposed to go, but he ended up right where he was supposed to be. How many times do we run from God and whoops, here we are. When you run from God, the trip is always longer and harder than it would be if you stayed with God. It never ceased to amaze me how many times I meet people and they're like, I'd like to have a deep relationship with God. I'd like to be close to God. I'd like to come to church. They want an instant relationship with God. Not for God's sake, for their own sake. Let God go for years and years. How about you have a friend that you haven't seen in 50 years knock at your door and ask you for money, for shelter, to sit down and listen like the relationship never stopped? When we run from God and we put God aside all of our lives, well, I've been going to church every Sunday morning. You still can't be far from God. Well, I'm a preacher. You can still be far from God. Well, I read my Bible. You still can't be far from God. I can sit at McDonald's all day. It won't make me a Big Mac. <laughs> Bev is in the back, she's like, well, maybe. <laughs> Coming to church doesn't make you a Christian. It makes you someone that comes to church. I don't like that, Marco. I don't either. Relationship with God is built by walking with God daily. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I will go where you call me. You never pray, oh, please, God, choose somebody else. Please, just choose somebody else, not me. It can't be me. I'm not good at much. It's you. It's all of us. So Jonah is not about a fish. Jonah is not about a fish. The book of Jonah mentioned fish for a total of two times. Two times. God is used 14 times. Lord is used 21 times. Even sackcloth. Do you know what sackcloth is? It's mentioned three times. We may want to rethink all of those fish-themed Jonah study guides. Book of 
Jonah reminds us that God's knowledge is beyond us. His love is beyond our love. And his acts of love are extensive beyond our imagination. God loves our enemy even if we don't, don't love them. Hopefully, hopefully the church can find a way to emulate such love. <coughs> that COVID cough is not gonna give. We are in storms in many ways, just like Jonah. Have you seen the storm of racism? The storm of violence against minorities? Have you seen the storms of poverty? The storm of hate, just pure hate. What saddens me even most is that oftentimes I see that hate from people that profess being Christians. We are in storms, in many different storms. Are we sleeping spiritually? Are we standing up? Are we running from God or are we running towards God? Are we trying to find spiritual excuses to let sadness and hurt destroy the earth? Or are we going to do something? The world is not in a good shape. God loves everyone. It's hard to come to church for the first time worship a God that is love some Christians are not so much loving when the Christians we can see are not so loving it is our responsibility the people watching at home the people in this room to show that love, to get out of our comfort zone, to go to Nineveh. I can't make this any better. Amen. <laughs>